Hi guys, uh, let's start and uh, try and solve this in our question. So the question is talking about a compound F and it contains the element carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So, so uh, underlying that, uh, all carbon-carbon bonds in, a, in F are single bonds. So that's another valid information. And the structure of F was analyzed by mass spectrometry and infrared and NMR spectroscopy. So three different techniques are being used. Uh, the first thing is the mass spectrum shows that the value of mass to charge value for the M peak is 90. So uh, that's important. Now, 90 means uh, that that's the MR of this particular uh, molecule. The next thing is the ratio of the mm plus 1 height is given. Uh, now, using that ratio, uh, uh, that's because of the carbon-13 isotope, uh, you can use the formula of if you're given the mm plus 1 height, you can find the number of carbon atoms by using the formula, which is 100 over 1.1 and multiplied by the m plus 1 peak divided by the m peak, which would become 100 over 1.1 into uh, 0 0.7. So that's our m plus 1 peak divided by 22.1. So let's do that quickly. And the answer that I'm getting is uh, 3. So that clearly indicates that the molecule has three carbon atoms. Uh, that's the first information that we have. So we've got the num we've got the number of carbon atoms. The next thing is suggest the molecular formula of F. So we need to figure out what the molecular formula of F is. So you've got uh, three carbon atoms. Uh, now, if you have three carbon atoms, I'm going to have a look. If I have three carbon atoms, I'm going to draw one of the molecules. So how many oxygens do I need? Now, three carbon atoms, that's 36. So this already is giving me 36. Now, what's going to be left is going to be 54. So how do I make up for 54? What I can do is I can add, uh, I can think of a carboxylic acid, and we can we can do some trial and errors. Uh, even if it's not a carboxylic acid, I'm just putting in two oxygens over there. So that's, uh, so I had left, because I had to make 90, so I've got 54 now. Now that's two oxygen, so 32 is gone from there. And if I remove 32, I'll be left with uh, 20, 22. So I've got 22 now. Uh, I can put another oxygen over here. So let's uh, let's put another oxygen over here. Let's uh, put an O, a single O. And uh, so so that one oxygen is gone. So I'm left with just uh, so remove 16. So you're left with eight. Uh, so there would probably be eight hydrogens. So let's start adding hydrogens. Uh, let's see if I have, if I have eight hydrogens. That's now if you look over here, uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, and that's six hydrogens. And in fact, six hydrogen is correct because when I removed sixteen from twenty-two, I should have gotten actually six. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, eight. So this formula is exactly matching it's exactly matching 90 but how do we know this is the formula this is we what we have done is we've figured out the molecular formula what we haven't done is is figuring out we know that c3 and h6 and they are o3s so we figured out the molecular formula but this is one of the isomer that is possible there could be other isomers that could be possible as well for example another possibility is that the oh might not be on the middle carbon atom the oh might be on the carbon at the end so here you can see this is my other possibility uh, or there could be other possibilities as well uh, that there is no carboxylic acid instead there's a serial bond O and there would be two OH groups somewhere else but we can what we can do is we can have a look at the other type uh, other information that's given now what we have only done right now is we figured out the molecular formula what we haven't done is we don't know what particular structure does the molecule have we have no idea we just know that there are C3, H6 and O3 based on the fact that that gives me 90 so that's what we are suggesting now the infrared spectrum is of f was obtained and using the data booklet and your knowledge of infrared spectroscopy to identify the type of bond and the functional group responsible for these three absorptions so we need to open the infrared data booklet for this now we need to find out uh, why why are we getting a broad and strong absorption at 3350 so open the data booklet and we're going to figure out who's vibrating what type of bond is vibrating at this particular wave number, 3350. So have a look over here. And you would notice that, let me take out the pointer. You would notice 
that the OH at thirty three fifty you've you've got you've got OH peaks at for belonging to alcohols. So I mean that's the only one that's uh, that's resonating at that particular range. So it's definitely an OH. So let's add that. Uh, so there is an OH bond over here. What about the other ones? Uh, there's a very broad and strong peak. Now it's a very broad peak at 2680. So a very broad peaks usually they belong to carboxylic acids. Now you can have a look. Uh, a very broad peak that belongs to carboxylic acids. It's it's a carboxylic acid. OH. It's the same OH bond, but the carboxylic acid. So it's the same one, but the carboxylic acid one. So this one is now the OH bond, but belonging to a carboxylic acid. Uh, that's the functional group. This one is the alcohol. I mean, this is where we were supposed to write it. And this one is the carboxylic acid. Uh, the last one now. The last one is 1725. And you're getting a strong absorption at 1725. Now, 1725 is a very unique wave number. So have a look at these absorptions, 1725. It's a C double bond O. And 1725 is probably the one belonging to carboxylic acids because we had a carboxylic acid. So this one is your C double bond O. That's the one that's vibrating and probably belongs to a carboxylic acid because a carboxylic acid always has a C double bond O. So we're pretty close to uh, to the molecule that we are trying to figure out. Uh, the one that we drew, just hypothetically speaking, uh, all up, I mean, you have got two OH groups, one belonging to carboxylic acid, and you have a cedal bond O as well. Now, you're not sure, you, are, you already know that there is a carboxylic acid, so it could be both of these, either of these molecules. These are the only two isomers that are possible. Uh, it has a carboxylic acid, this has a carboxylic acid, and it's supposed to have two OH groups, one, one a normal alcohol and one a carboxylic acid alcohol. So a normal alcohol and a carboxylic acid alcohol. So we are left to figure out between these two, which one is the right one. So going back now, uh, the next thing is, the using CDCL3, which is a deuterated solvent, uh, which is kind of an inert solvent when it comes to NMR spectroscopy, and they're showing the NMR spectrum. Now, by looking at the NMR spectrum of the molecule, you would notice that there are exactly four chemical environments. So based on that, based on that fact alone, I'm going to go back, I'm going to look at the two molecules that I had drawn, and I'm going to try and figure out which one has four chemical environments. So this one, let's look at the first one. So you have, a, have this OH proton, that's chemical environment number one. Uh, then you have, then you have a CH2, the two hydrogen protons in a CH2. Then you have another two hydrogen protons in a CH2. So that's, so this one over here is your second chemical environment. This one is your third chemical environment. And you have an OH again, that's your fourth chemical environment. So this one definitely has four chemical environments, uh, all four are different. All four, the chemical environments are different and they're going to resonate at different frequencies. Uh, what about this molecule? How many chemical environments are present in this molecule? So you've got an OH, that's chemical environment number one. You've got another OH which is different from the first one, so that's chemical environment number two. Then you have an H, so that's chemical environment number three. And you have a CH3, all these protons are identical, so that's chemical environment number four. So that's not helping us because this has four chemical environments and this one also has exactly four chemical environments. So go back and what else? Now we're going to look at the splitting pattern. We're going to study the splitting pattern. Uh, you've got two singlets. Those two singlets, they probably belong to OH because they don't split. So you've got two OH peaks and they're not splitting. So that's clear. That's clear enough. Uh, but what about the other two? You've got a you've got a quadruplet. So this one is a quadruplet, and this other one is a doublet. So we're looking for a quadruplet and a doublet. Now go back, 
find out who's giving you a quadruplet and a doublet. Now over here, you would notice that the look at these two hydrogens. The neighborhood has two hydrogens. So this one is a triplet. So this peak is the triplet. You remember the n plus one rule. And this one also is going to be a I mean the chemical environment number three that I marked, that's also going to be a triplet. So that's two triplets. Because the CH2 over here has two hydrogens as its neighbor, so that's N plus one rule, that's a triplet. The CH2 over here has two hydrogens as its neighbor, so that's also N plus one triplet. Uh, remember the OH peaks, they don't interfere, they don't cause splitting. So this molecule is out of the question because we were not getting triplets in the NMR spectrum. So I'm gonna look at this molecule, that's the only option left for me. Uh, so, so the OH is singlet, this one is singlet, these two are singlets. Uh, what about this H? Now this H neighborhood has three hydrogens. If it has three hydrogens, that's going to be a quadruplet. And this one over here, this one has one neighborhood hydrogen, so that's going to be a doublet. So this is the only one that's left that's going to be the right answer. So I'm just going to copy this molecule over there because that's going to be my answer to this question. So here's my molecule. Uh, the only thing that's left is to figure out because they are actually asking us to identify the type of proton and the relative peak area. The relative peak area, remember, is the number of, it's basically the number of hydrogen protons. That is what is meant by the relative peak area. So I'm going to just match each one. So I've got starting with the two OH. So now this OH is a carboxylic acid OH. So let's look at the data booklet. So I've marked, I've matched, uh, the OH peak belongs to a carboxylic acid. So this other singlet belongs to this OH. Uh, the other thing is, uh, this CST is a doublet and this one is a quadruplet, which we have already discussed. So, so this one over here is this doublet and this one over here is this quadruplet. So you can fill this table and mark what's one point for what proton, uh, go back, have a look. Uh, the one at 1.4 is this one, it's this CH3. So just go and write CH3 over, the, over there and tell them the relative peak area, that's three, because you've got three protons. Uh, what's happening at 3.9, at 3.9, tell them what's at 3.9, it's CH, uh, 3.9, this one. So it's CH next to a carboxylic acid, next to an alcohol. So we're gonna do that. So it's basically the CH, which has CH3 and it has OH and it also has a carboxylic acid. You can try and underline this uh, so that it can be clear that which hydrogen proton you're talking about. And how many hydrogens do you have? You have exactly one. What about the other one? Now, the other one is you've got uh, the OH at 13, that's a carboxylic acid OH. So this one type of proton, that's that's your carboxylic acid OH. Only one of them. And this other one at 4.7, that's your normal alcohol. And there's only one of them. So the next part is describe and explain the splitting pattern for the absorption at 1.4, which we've already done previously. Uh, why is the one at 1.4? becoming a doublet because the neighboring hydrogen has one proton. So that's what we are going to write. So neighboring carbon atom has one proton. What about the next one? Uh, remember if something is dissolved in D2O and the NMR spectrum of this new solution obtained, two of the absorptions in the table, one were not present in this spectrum. So always remember D2O adding D2O, uh, water likes to ionize. So these two peaks, the one that I'm crossing out, these are the ones that would disappear. 
uh, the one at 4.7 or and the other one that's at 12.9 over here so the two OH peaks are going to disappear so the one at 12.9 and the one at 4.7 they're going to disappear and the last thing is we are supposed to figure out the structure of F which we have already done right at the beginning so we've already figured out the structure of F and that pretty much sums up the question.